So, we did a thing. Well, I did a thing yesterday. You want to see Belle? Gosh, this thing is tough. They ran. We got our first set of meat birds. We got four meat birds to try. We've dev never done it. We weren't raised doing it. We're a little nervous about it, but we're gonna give it a try. So the meat birds that we got are the Cornish rocks. They're not the giant Cornish rocks, they're just regular, but they have to be here for six to eight weeks, and then we have to let them go. So for right now, we have them in an old dog house with a, a heat lamp. And as they get bigger and outgrow that, we'll either move them to the second cage, let them stay intermixed with the girls, although that might be hard with the food situation, or we have this giant, well, I think it's giant, black water trough container thing that we might move them into and keep them safe. We have, we have it prepared. Um, so we'll decide which way we go. So we feed these guys meat bird food. The girls don't get meat bird food, so we have to kind of keep it segregated, but we're using the NatureWise like we do for the girls, but NatureWise has a meat bird food. And let me tell you how wonderful it smells compared to a lot of other foods, so we really like the NatureWise product, so that's what they get. Go on back in. That's their first night they spent here. And now we have to not get attached. Yikes. A lot of things have changed in this country and we have actively been trying to become more self-sufficient. And one of those is to raise our own meat. Um, again, like Trish said, it's not something that we grew up with or are used to, but given the changes that we've been going through in the past few years with inflation, and the concerns with what are in meat that you buy from the store, it seemed to be the most logical way to address those issues and, again, become more self-sufficient. In making decisions about uh, having livestock, we also had to consider uh, where we live. And in Florida, there is the potential for hurricanes, and we're trying to keep our livestock at a level that's sustainable and we can basically evacuate if there was ever a hurricane. So uh, some people just go ahead and, and get, you know, let's say 20 meat birds or, or even more. Sometimes it's up to 50 and that would, you know, pretty much give you enough uh, chicken to be able to last you for the course of a year, you know, given that it's just Trish, I, and, and our son. So <clears throat> basically um, trying to evacuate 50 chickens uh, or have some means to evacuate 50 chickens can be challenging. So we are keeping it small at this point. It's manageable for us as we're learning and as we're growing into this lifestyle. And then we'll probably move up as we develop ways on how to, you know, move our livestock if we have to, to protect them in the case of, you know, an unfortunate event, which let's face it, uh, where we live, it's going to happen eventually. And we're, trying to prepare for it in advance so we're not trying to make decisions at the last moment. One of the things we're trying to accomplish today is to get our um, muscadine grapes under control. And we've bought basically some T-posts to be able to um, get them up off the ground 
and maybe they'll start developing some grapes and just maybe we can make some wine one day. So I'm going to use these T-posts and uh, add it to the existing structure that we have to hold the muscadine grapes up on this side of the property and we have more on the other side of the property. And then use some Brazilian twine to wrap in between so that it can kind of grab onto something and grow up instead of just down on the ground or finding a tree and growing up the side of a tree. So this will help uh, these uh, muscadine grapes hopefully develop here in the near future. On this side we've added um, a green grape and this first one that I'm going to do is the green grape. We have muscadines behind that and then also on the other side of the property we have muscadines that are just naturally grown. Uh, we didn't plant them. They're just everywhere around here. So this is Brazilian twine. You can pretty much use any kind of twine and all we're trying to do is just create a simple trellis for these grapes. So today we have some new members of our family are coming and they are ducks. We're getting two ducks, a male and a female, and we're going to try to see what it's like to raise ducks and see if that is something that's in our future for breeding. So we're just collecting a few bits and pieces that we need to at least temporarily set up uh, living conditions for them. Uh, we have a water, we have a small house in which we'll have to kind of cover a little bit. Not sure how yet, whether with, with a tarp or some kind of plastic. And then um, sort of a fencing, and this is just something we've learned off of other people's experience taking care of ducks, is trying to block off their water so they can't make a mess. So we're going to look at maybe trying to set that up, and we'll show you how it looks in the end. And hopefully it'll work out at least for the for the first few nights until we can um, continue to problem solve and figure out what works best in our situation. Here's the uh, cage. We have some of the fencing that we're going to use to kind of block off their water and some posts that'll be used to hold that up. And then, you know, a little saw to cut those pipes down to the size we need and a hammer to stick at the ground. And we're going to try to isolate them from the chickens initially, see if they get along. At least it, it's a good start. We may make modifications. We'll probably make modifications, but this is what we had on hand, and they're coming today. I told you this door likes to shut. It loves to shut. Loves it. Covered. Mostly. Yeah, we have it underneath the tarp, mostly. We might have to 
adjust that a little bit, but for the most part, it looks good. Yeah. At least for now, because we're going to have to build them a house if they don't integrate. Hopefully they'll integrate. And then we have their water and food over here, and then we just need to uh, look at how to build a separator. For the water. For the water. Uh, Not the food. Basically making kind of a a fencing area across the front of the water so they can just kind of stick their heads in and dip it into the water, drink water, but not get in the water, which is what they love to do is get in the water and make a holy hell of a mess. But <clears throat> this is just a, a thing that we saw and it looked like it was an effective way to manage uh, messy ducks. So we'll see how it goes for us. Anxiously awaiting for the arrival of our ducks. Oh, they've arrived. Hi. Hi. Ducks are here. Oh, there's a duck egg. Okay. <laughs> so they just laid one just in the before cage. you, yeah, just in the cage. Okay. Now, the preface this one of his roosters attacked one of his ducks. Oh, okay. So there's one that's. Yeah. Hey, quackers. Oh, yes. I shook the poop out of them. Yeah, I'm sure. Oh, yes. Hey, quackers. They're usually very quiet. Hi, babies. <gasps> Look at how Hi. big you guys are. I don't know which one's the boy and which one's the girl. Um, this one's the girl at least. That was the girl? Yeah. Okay. So basically, uh, the rooster kind of was getting after the... Yeah. Okay, so her feathers will heal once that rooster's not a part of her life anymore. Uh-huh. Or that's the boy. That's no, the girl. the girl's on the right. Okay, and that's the boy. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you guys are sweet. Yeah, they like to hug each other. Oh, they're kind of hugging each other. <laughs> Here we go, kiddos. We're gonna let you out. It's okay, sweet baby. I'm going in. Uh huh. Go ahead. I'm gonna go in too. Aurora's like, ah, uh, yeah. Hiding. We're all hiding. Come on, babies. Watch your little toes. Watch their toes. Oh, um, yeah. He's sitting on the. Come on. I, I don't come have on. any way to teach them something. Come on, baby. Come on, come on, come on. Quack, 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 Chickens are like, wait a minute. <laughs> no, they're really What's going on? They're really nice looking. She's so pale. Yeah, probably because she was getting beat up by that rooster. Well, hopefully you'll be okay here. You got a little skinny neck. You two like each other. Yeah. That's yeah, good. Said, You're buddies. They were, they were buddies. That's awesome. And, and the little boy looks like he's got a toupee on. <laughs> he's got some hair loss too. Yeah. It's okay, okay kiddos. It's, it's okay. It's a stressful day. You want me to show you where the water is? Yeah, she's like, food! Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's great. Oh, yeah, bring it. <laughs> He's like, go ahead, honey, eat. Yeah, we'll eat. Mm-hmm. Yum, yeah, yum, hungry. huh? They haven't eaten in four hours. <laughs> Probably longer. I'm surprised they didn't go for the water first. There's some water right behind you. There you go. Oh, yeah. yeah. There you go. And so what we're doing is we're keeping this door shut right here. Which won't make Queen Belle happy. And that way the chickens who are now in the corner scared to death, um, you know, they can have some time to get used to being around each other. And then maybe we can introduce them and see how they all get along. But right now we got the babies in here and the adults. And then over on this side, the ducks. Okay, so this is what happens when you introduce something new to the area. Belle, who is the queen right there, she is in full investigation mode of what the heck did we bring to the coop. And she's watching intently. And she's hot. Just to see what in the heck's going on. She is in charge. She is the queen. These guys were raised with turkeys and chickens, so it's very likely that they're not 
phased at all by the chickens. They don't even seem to really recognize their presence right now, so. But Miss Bell recognizes their presence and she's still going back and forth, <laughs> making sure they know she's in charge. Okay, keeping ducks away from water, impossible. <laughs> Didn't take but 10 minutes for them to figure out how to jump in this bowl. <laughs> and that's why we need the fence around it so that this kind of shenanigans doesn't happen. <laughs> she's like wanting to get in too. She's oh, like wanting to get in. Oh, we'll get you a pool. Oh yeah, they're gonna need something to take their take their water baths. Well, we've made a couple of changes. We have added a stump so we can sit with them so they can get comfortable with us. We've given them a house that they just today, first time, went in. And then we installed a, a more traditional type feeder. And then we have their water over there. And I put a tarp on the top to give them shade. <clears throat> and uh, some escape from the rain. Right now they're just chilling out back here behind the palmettos. Can't really see them too well, but there's, yeah, there's one peeking up. But for the most part, they've been walking around and pretty happy and they don't seem very stressed. Only when we go into the cage to, uh, uh, you know, clean things up, give them food and stuff like that, they get a little stressed out and that's why they're in the corner right now. But hopefully in time, They'll get used to us and be like the chickens that just kind of walk around us and don't run away from us every time we enter their cage. We still have the nuggets inside basically a dog house because one, we're protecting them from uh, the older girls, which are scratching away because Trish threw some wormies in there and they're trying to find every last one with such conviction. But this protects them there's really not too many places that they can go. Um, the big birds can go to to get to them so, and any kind of predators. It also deadens the sound as far as them making chirps that would alert a, present, a predator to their presence. So we'll keep that. And then out here, we have put them in basically just a small cat crate I guess small dog crate and it's just open so they can basically the nuggets can just dig around and have a good time put their food in water get them in the shade a little bit and allow them just to be outside for a while and to do what birds do which is you know pecking at stuff and having a good time so might as well give them the best life they can during the time they're alive And today we're going to plant a little bit of uh, okra. Tomatoes, hopefully. And some tomatoes. And peppers. And peppers. Because we've got a few garden beds we still need to fill up. The rest that we just planted recently are doing absolutely wonderful. And this is our, basically our solution to watering back here. It will, it will extend all the way, but it's not the most efficient use of water because it waters pretty much everything, um, even the ground. Eventually, we'd like to um, put in some type of a better watering system that will use a lot less water but get the job done better. You can see everything's growing quite nicely there. Starting to get things popping up here on this side. And these guys are quite happy. May or may not be able to see it, but our friendly neighborhood spider man is here to eat all the bugs. We don't try to bother them too much because they're doing a good service for us. And I'll show you over here where our onions are. We have this wonderful volunteer tomato plant growing in the corner, which is kind of crazy. But over we're, we're going to go ahead and leave it alone and let it, let it do its thing. Those are volunteers too. And. Chris just said this is a volunteer too, which, hey, <laughs> supposedly those things do really well. Volunteers are supposed to be one of the hardier growing plants. 
I'm going to do two plants of that type, 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 and in the center I'm going to do two plants of that type. And hopefully it's not too much. So I know this is not a normal planting routine where you're making wells around every plant, but because our soil and compost is probably 85 to 90% sand, if I stick my finger in this bed, even though we watered today, it is still dry. So I'm doing these wells and hoping that it will funnel the water to the plants that I need. And then the water that doesn't need will just go away. We'll see if it works. Join us next time on the Average Camper's Adventures.